A very good day to you and welcome to the program. It's a lovely autumn day and if you listen very carefully, maybe you can hear the doves singing in the trees. I've got a very interesting subject I'd like to share with you today and uh, we've entitled this program Faith and Obedience. You see, there's no good having faith if you don't obey what God tells you to do. And obedience without faith doesn't work either. So the two go hand in hand. If you go with me to the book of John, chapter 2, and I'm going to read the account of the first miracle that Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee, where he turned water into wine. Not just ordinary wine, the best wine. So if you've got your Bibles with you, please, and you've got that cup of coffee, a cup of tea, just relax and listen to the Word of God. I find often if I'm a little bit stressed or I'm a bit uptight, when I read the Word, it just settles my spirit and it brings a peace into my heart. So I want you to be restful and I want you to listen carefully because this might be an answer to some questions you've been asking God for a long time. So we start off with John chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. I've been to Cana. I've been to, I've been to that little place in Israel. It's very close to Nazareth. Verse 2. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Verse 5. This is the important verse. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he tells you, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. There's a word for somebody watching this program. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Don't argue. That's where faith and obedience come in. Verse 6. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made into wine, amazing folks, and did not know where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then that which is inferior. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory, and His disciples believed in Him. And after this, He went down to Capernaum, called Jesus Town, he, his mother, and his brothers, and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. This is the word of the Lord. Unto his name be all praise, honor, and glory. My dear friend, God is requiring from you and me obedience and faith in these last days. So what we've got to do, we've got to do as the servants did. We have to do exactly what Jesus tells us to do. No more and no less. We have to do it by faith and we have to be obedient. God is looking in these last days for obedient Christians full of faith. How do we get faith? Now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. People often ask me to pray for them, and maybe you ask me for the same thing. Please pray for us that our faith might be increased. By the way, that's not a bad prayer. If you look in um, the book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, the disciples said to Jesus, please increase our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by this book. That's how you get faith. No other way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we need faith and then we need to be obedient. My dear friend, it's no good talking about faith but not following through. Faith is a verb. It's a doing word. It's not a noun. This table that I'm sitting against is a noun. It can't move. Faith is a verb. It's a doing word. Faith has got feet. When faith goes to the market, it takes a big basket. Okay? He who aims beneath the stars aims too low. See? Faith is something that you can't see, but you, you have to believe in. So what happened was Mary told the servants of the bridegroom, just do what Jesus tells you. I mean, they must have thought that the Lord was, had lost it. Fill those stone jars with water. And when they filled the last one, the Lord said, now take some of that water and take it to the master of ceremonies. And when he drank it, it turned into beautiful, beautiful, mature wine. That is a miracle. Now, the other day, I read in a little book about a lady by the name of Florence Nightingale. Now, I know the older people have heard about her. Maybe some of the younger folk haven't heard about her. Florence Nightingale introduced nurses to hospitals. Before her, there was no nurses. Okay? She was known as the lady with the lamp. Now, listen to what she says. She said, when they asked her, about how she did this miraculous work. Do you know that Florence Nightingale, they say, she reduced the death count of soldiers by two-thirds. The British soldiers had gone to the Crimean War and they were dying like flies. She came from a very affluent, wealthy family. She was a God-fearing woman. She went out to Crimea, Crimea with some of her friends and went into these places that were supposed to be hospitals, okay, which looked like slaughterhouses. They looked like, um, yeah, places where you slaughter animals. And she started to clean the place up. She started to wash the wounds, started to encourage the soldiers, and reduced the death rate by two-thirds. Because in those days, because of the nature of the war, men were losing their arms, they were losing their legs. They were depressed. They were lying in a state of dirt and filth. And she came in, the Lady of Mercy, and she started to help these wounded soldiers. She saved two-thirds of them. The Lady with a Lamp. When all the doctors were sleeping in the middle of the night, she'd walk around the different uh, wards with this lamp and just see that the soldiers were okay and bring them a kind word, pray with them, mop their brow if they were perspiring, and help them. And uh, she's, uh, she's an absolute amazing woman. Now, when they asked her, how did you manage to accomplish this? Because she, began, she started uh, nursing homes, teaching young ladies how to be nurses, how to look after sick people. You know, funny enough, I say that to you, this very day, I've been to a memorial service. And the lady that died is a, a really an angel of a woman. And uh, she'd had cancer for 18 years, and she fought it. And eventually she died. So now she's received perfect healing, because that's what death does, doesn't it? But at her, it was, the memorial service was taken on this very farm in our church. And she was a nursing sister. And all her friends had come. And right at the end, this has never ever happened to me before, and, and I've, I've attended many, many funerals and memorial services. All the nursing sisters and the matrons came to the front of the church and to pay homage and to recommit to their calling of nursing people. They got a piece of paper and one of the nursing sisters 
read the oath that they take as nurses. They make an oath that uh, the patient will come before anything else, that they will take care of the patient before they are concerned about any other responsibility. It was very touching for me. I don't know whether Florence Nightingale wrote that prayer. Maybe some of you nursing sisters watching this program could maybe put some light on that. But it really touched me when I heard the commitment from these ladies. This lady that we were, were saying goodbye to, a few days before she died, she was in a special home. She got up and she started to massage the feet of some of the other patients just to give them peace so that they could sleep. How's that for commitment? Now, Florence Nightingale was the same type of woman. And this is what she said. If I could give you information of my life, it would be to show how a woman of very ordinary ability, average woman, okay, has been led by God in strange and unaccustomed paths to do in His service what He has done in her. Remember, there was no nurses before Florence Nightingale. So this was a vision that she had to take on by faith. Now, some of you young people are sitting there and you're saying, you know, I want to do something constructive with my life. Please don't waste the time that I wasted. Ask God to give you a vision and then by faith, obey what the Lord has told you to. And you will have the most exciting life you've ever had. It's not about qualifications. It's not about how well you can speak. It's not about any talents you've got. It's just raw obedience and faith which is required. I can give testimony to that myself. So she says, In his service, what he has done in her, she did for others. And if I could tell you all, you would see how God has done all and I have done nothing. I have worked, now this is very important, I have worked hard, very hard, she says, and that is all. And I have never refused God anything. Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp, the lady that started nursing homes to teach young girls how to look after sick people all over the world. What did she do? She obeyed. And by faith, she did it. But she also worked hard. I've got a little word here for some, some folks watching this program. You know, I, I've been a farmer most of my life. And farming is not easy, let me tell you. Farming is not for sissies, as they say. But I've never worked so hard in my life since I've become a full-time preacher. I uh, get up very early in the morning. And when I'm away from home, I sometimes go to bed very late sometimes early the next morning, because it's my life, it's my passion, and it's what keeps me going. I am living my dream. Are you living your dream? You say to me, no, I'm not living my dream, Uncle Angus. Well, why don't you start? What must I do? First thing you must do is listen to what the master is telling you, right? So Mary said, Mary, the mother of Jesus, to the servants, just do what he tells you to do. What did he tell them to do? He said, I want you to fill all those stone jars with water. That doesn't make sense. Now, God might say to you, young man, I want you to complete your education first. And then I'm going to take you into the mission field. You might say, well, that doesn't make sense. Just do it. You see, some people want to go into foreign lands where Christianity is forbidden to be spoken, but because they've got a qualification, they are a teacher or maybe a doctor, right, or an engineer, and they're not pastors, because if they were a pastor or a preacher or an evangelist, probably the worst, they'd never ever get a visa. But because they are working people, ordinary people, that's what Florence Nightingale said, they will get a visa to go into that country. And then because of what they do, they start to build up a relationship with the local inhabitants. 
And that's how you get your foot in the door to preach the gospel by faith and to see signs, wonders, and miracles take place. You know, I love reading biographies. It's my, it's my dream. I, I, I never get tired of reading about people. I love people. That's why I'm telling you the story. James Hudson Taylor, he lived over 200 years ago. He took the gospel to China, the biggest population group in the whole world. He was studying to be a doctor. He never completed his studies. But when he went to China, you know what he did? The first thing he did, he opened up a dispensary, like a little pharmacy. And he started to help the local people with um, medicine. And that's how he built up his trust. And then from there, the explosion took place. 1,000 families by faith, raw faith. Remember what faith is? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. By raw faith, he brought out a thousand families from Britain to preach the gospel all over China. By faith. Never asked for any money. Didn't belong to a massive organization. Faith and obedience. Okay? And of course, we know what happened. He was tested severely in his own personal health. The Boxer Rebellion broke out in China. A lot of those families were massacred. They were killed. But the seeds were sown. And the greatest revival taking place in the world today is taking place in mainline China in the house church where they say more people have been born again than people giving natural birth. And that happened because one man had the faith and had the courage to obey the Word of God, and he went out and he did it. And I can tell you many other stories. Folks, we need to start operating in faith. Now, remember what uh, Augustine said? Faith is to believe what you cannot see, but the reward of that faith is to see what you believed. And I can honestly tell you from my own personal life, when I started off preaching, I would preach to five people, two people, one person, doesn't matter. But I've been faithfully, been obedient to God for nearly 40 years. And all of a sudden, we've had an explosion. God has done the exceptional. And you know, the wonderful thing is, folks, no one can touch God's glory when He does a miracle. When Jesus turned the water into wine, no one else took that credit. Not the servants, not the master of ceremonies, not the bridegroom, not even Jesus' mother. It was God. And that's what God wants. God wants us to glorify His Son. And He wants us to do it through faith and through obedience. And when we can do that, I want to tell you something now. We'll change the world. But we've got to work hard. Very, very hard. And we've got to really know what we're standing for. If you look at Romans chapter 1, verse 5, again, Paul talks about obedience. Obedience to the faith. And that's what brings revival. What is revival? A people saturated with God. So you say you want to see the violence stop. You want to see immorality stop. You want to see corruption stop. Well, you need to start. Well, how can we start? Start by praying. That's right, praying. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's what the Bible says. James chapter 5, verse 16, righteous man or woman, boy or girl. We saw it happen in Bloemfontein on the 22nd of April, 2017. One point, okay, we just put the plus there. I don't know whether it was 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.7 million people. As I'm telling you the story, I can still hardly believe it happened myself. And how did it happen? Faith and obedience. That's all. Right? We've got to be consistent with this walk. This is not a, you know, I feel like it today, tomorrow I don't feel like it. No. Florence Nightingale looked after those soldiers in fair weather and in the foul weather, in the middle of battle and in the time of peace. You can't tell the Lord that you'll serve Him and you'll walk by faith when it suits you. No, no. It's unconditional. You cannot be a fair weather Christian. 
Either you're going to walk by faith or you're not going to walk by faith. Either you're going to obey God or you're not going to obey God. See? And what we said and what I'm saying to you again, you cannot serve two masters. Right? Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, He who is not for me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. So you've got to make up your mind what you're going to do. And that's where obedience comes. Many people pray the sinner's prayer, but that's where their walk with God stops. No, my dear friend, that's where it starts. After that, you've got to walk the talk. What does that mean? You cannot carry on in a life of immorality once you've surrendered your life to Jesus. You've got to make a decision and a choice to walk away from that sin. Then God starts to open doors. You see, our God is a holy God. He's not just a God. He's a holy God. He cannot look upon sin of any description. So if you really want to be used by God, and He's looking for men and women, boys and girls in these last days, that He can work through to uh, cause many signs, wonders, and miracles, so that people can be saved before He comes back again. But we need to be walking in the light. We need to repent of things in our lives that we know are unpleasing to God. You see, folks, when you've got a relationship with Jesus, it tells, it tells this way, how much time are you and I spending in prayer? Now, if you are living in sin, you can't pray. I defy you to pray. You, your prayers will not be heard. Our God is a righteous God, okay? And you will not be able to go to Him and pray, and you won't hear from Him. He'll have nothing to do with you until you deal with that issue in your life. So I'm going to pray for you as we close. That first of all, God will make you obedient. That you'll deal with all those issues that are holding you back. And then I'm going to ask God to increase your faith to believe for the miraculous. And then there's nothing stopping you. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you'll be amazed at how your life is going to change. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, if ever we needed men and women to stand up for truth and righteousness in these last days, we need them today. Today you've taught us two things, Lord. Number one, that you want us to live by faith because your word says without faith we cannot please God and he who believes must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. And then secondly, Lord, you are asking for an obedient people. You want us to be obedient. You want us to be a holy people. Holiness is the end product of obedience. Father, I pray for my friends that you'll make us holy people that walk by faith and obedient people that trust you and love you with all our hearts. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time. God bless you and goodbye. Dankie dat jy hierdie week se episode van Koring Aar met oom Angus Bakken gekyk het. Ons vertrou dat jy daardeur geseen is. Vir meer inligting oor Angus Bakken, Shalom Ministries of komende gebede, besoek gerus www.angusbakken.co.za.